Hello, everyone. Good evening. So we are back. Today is day three of our program. We will uh, do a recap of whatever we had discussed in the second session, after which we will start off with today's topics. So in the previous session, we looked at connecting to a few more data sources, like connecting to data coming from web. We looked at how to connect to data coming from PostgreSQL server, how to you know, connect to data from MySQL. MySQL, I showed you how it, uh, Power BI, you know, even provides you with the links if you have to download any drivers or connectors in order to be able to access the data from databases. Okay. After that, after we got connect, I showed you how to connect to an Excel file and did some basic transformation on that data, like removing certain rows, removing the promoting the headers if they are not automatically recognized. Headers means what the column names. Okay. Uh, removing the records which are erroneous to make use of the extract option which we find under the transform ribbon. If you would like to extract a part of the string or a part of the data that is present in a string, you can just go ahead and use the extract option. These are all the things that were discussed in the previous session which you will find in the second day's recording. So as you all know, this is live session and after, after the class is over, immediately, almost instantaneously, the recordings are available on our YouTube channel. So whenever you want, you can go ahead and refer back to them. Today, what we will discuss is, we will look at a few more options that we have under data transformation on the Power Query Editor. How do we split a column, a field? How do we merge? So sorry, I should have called it just merge. How do we merge the columns? How do we uh, create columns based on some conditional statements, conditional columns, add columns by example, and merge queries. Query again, remember query means table. A table is referred to as a query in Power BI. So this is what we are going to look at now. I've already opened Power BI and I just, double clicked on the shortcut on the desktop and it opened this. And uh, as we know, we're not going to use any license here. So I'll simply close this home screen and it takes me directly to the report view. I'll do a quick recap of the steps performed yesterday. Here, I had connected to an Excel workbook. So common data sources to which we connect, they are available in this. You can simply click on Excel and get connected to it. Uh, the files will be shared with you all. The link to the files will be shared with you all today in the meeting and you can just download them. Okay. So I'm using countries sample data file. So once we are connected to the file, we will be able to see the list of worksheets in the file. When you select the worksheet on the navigator window, you get a preview of the data. If you click on the checkbox, it means you are now interested in using that data and the option to load it directly into Power BI desktop or to transform it and then subsequently load are available. Here, because I can clearly see that there are some issues with this data, I'm going to click on transform data. Certain steps are automatically applied by Power BI. Okay, like if you see the source step and as I was telling yesterday, when you click on this gear icon, it will be, uh, it will give you a pop-up from where you can choose, change the source if required. Navigation helps you to navigate between different worksheets or tables in the connection. Now it has automatically apparently promoted headers and changed some data types, assign correct data types here, but I don't want to take these steps. So I will just remove them. Now I would like to remove the top three rows. So we go up here and we can remove top three rows. After that, I'm going to promote the first row as the header by clicking on this icon. The column which has errors in it, if you want right to remove the errors, select the column and then go to remove rows. There's an option to remove those rows which contain errors and they're gone. If you feel there are duplicates which need to be removed, then you just go up to remove rows and select the option to remove duplicates and the duplicates are gone. Okay. 
And then coming to the data type, if you have to change, you just click on the icon of the data type there and you can choose an appropriate data type for the data in the field. If you want to change the data type of multiple members in one go, you can select all of them by holding down the control key on your keyboard and then do a right click on any one of the fields selected, go to change type and then you can change the data type. Here I want them as percentages. Okay, now we can rename the columns. So O and F, if we want, we can rename it. Here, there's a spelling mistake, independence. I can go ahead and rename it. All right. We can also replace the values. So in the transform section, we have a lot of options. So here, when I select replace values, yesterday, as I told you, it is case sensitive. So make sure that the same case that is used in the data is what is used here under replace values. F for forecast. Okay, and then I'm going to replace O. I'll click on O, replace values. You can see O automatically appears. The value in the cell that you select will appear. And it has to be re replaced with the word observed. Okay, so we can rename columns, we can remove columns, all these things. So there is one column here, which is completely null, not necessary. So I'll just click on remove columns. We can change the data type, we can rename the field, we can rename the name of the table. All these options are there. Every step that you apply is shown here. Okay, so job done. Till here we had learned. And the last thing that we had discussed was what if I might want to take the year part of this field and store it as a separate column. Now we can do this by going to the transform option and then we could extract a part of that data. However, when we extract what happens, I'll say the last four characters, when we extract what happens is the original column, the data in that column itself is replaced with whatever has been extracted from it. So if you would want to keep it as well as extract a part, then first you have to duplicate the data in that field. Now, how do you undo in Power BI? You just have to go to the step that is not required and you have to click on the cross mark under apply steps, under query settings. So I'm going to remove the last extracted step and I'll go ahead and first of all, right click on it and duplicate it. Once a copy of that column is created, now I will go ahead and use the extract option. And yesterday we had discussed about different options that we have under extract. You can get the length of the string. You can extract certain number of characters from the beginning or last. You can also specify a delimiter and extract, okay? And you can extract even a, a range. All these options are there. For me, for us in this case, last four characters is what we need. I'm going to extract that part. So you can see it got replaced. Now I'll change the title to year. The year in which the country got independence, let's say. All right, so my date is anyways there. If I want, I can go ahead and just change that copy thing here, you know, remove copy, it's not required. I can just call it date over here, done. All right, until this, these were the features that we had discussed about yesterday. Now, today what we will do is we will talk about some more options that we have under text column, this group, which helps us manipulate text data. Now, if you have to manipulate data under numerical columns, we have number columns group. You know, you have a lot of options, statistical uh, calculations, you have, trigonometric operations, all these things are there. Anyway, here our intention now is to talk about split column. Okay, so what to do? Uh, first, I will tell you all the options here and then we will talk about how to use it. So let's say we have this column called as independence and I would like to just take the name of the country over here like Portugal, United Kingdom, so on and so forth. Okay, that is what I'm interested in. So what do I do? Okay, I'll go to split column. Now we have certain options here again. We can split by delimiter. We can split by number of characters based on their position, uppercase to lowercase, lot of options are there. Now these three are most frequently used, extensively used. You can see there also, there's a very subtle gray line which is dividing the top three from the bottom four. Okay, let's try by position first. <clears throat> Okay, by positions. What does it mean when we say by positions and how is it different from by characters? 
here you could specify the positions as you can see multiple numbers can be specified specify the positions at which to split the text column let's say i want to take from position 18 first split and then from position uh, 24 the next split okay or maybe not 18 1, 2 3 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12 13 Okay, let's say from position number 12 and then position number 18. So what will this do? I've given 12 and 18, what will this do? You can see how it has created two. So from position number 12 onwards, independence, okay, independence was the first word which is what one, two. 12 characters long. So after that, I had the word from. Then from the 18th position, which is Portugal, the United Kingdom and all this, they have come. So some places it worked. If I had just taken position 18, I think I would have gotten the name of the countries directly. I just wanted to demonstrate that you can give multiple values. So after position 12, it, it brought whatever it is then again from the 18th position whatever data was there we managed to get it right so it gave you from position 12 and then from position 18 two splits two splits here i'm not very happy about what has happened so i'll just go ahead and um, go to this split column by positions some of the steps will have a gear icon which means you can edit them some of them where you don't see that icon, the only option to change it is to remove it and create it again. Okay, here I have the gear icon, so I'll just click there. And I will say, don't do this. 12 and 18, I don't need two splits, I need only one split. From the 18th position, go ahead and split. Okay, from the 18th position, I would want it to go ahead and split. Okay. So after the 18th position, what I have is basically the name of the country. To some extent, it has worked. I should have taken a backup. Any. Anyway, to some extent, it has worked. Most of the places it worked, but over here it didn't work. Okay, here the name, uh, it, it the value was slightly different. Let me undo that step now and show you. Okay, so independence from independence from independence from. So 18th position was working, and all of these places 18th position worked. But here it is independence of. So 18th position actually trimmed off even this T and A. So in this particular place, when I say give me from the 18th position, it is not working as expected. I need only the United Kingdom to come, right? So position means from the particular position, whatever number of splits you want, you can create. I hope you all understood by position. Next thing we have is by number of characters. By number of characters, we have a lot of options here. You can specify the number of characters and then you can ask for splits. Suppose I say 10, 10 characters, okay? Take 10, 10 characters and repeatedly split it. So what will happen? I will get multiple splits. Just a moment, let me select it again. Here, this is the column. I'll go up to split by number of characters and let's say 10. And I'm asking it to repeatedly split it. You see, 10 characters independent, then another 10 characters C from PO, the remaining. And, and here, where we had really big names, so we have almost up to five splits which got created. Okay, because the data is pretty long in some of the places. So this is splitting by position. Now I'm going to again undo that step by deleting it from the uh, applied steps on the query editor. Let me select it again. So that is what by number of characters will mean. Okay, again, we can also say number of characters, give the number of characters once as far left as possible, once as far right as possible. These options also are available. However, in our case, this will not help because it's not a fixed number of characters that we are looking at in every row. The names, the length of the string in each row is different. 
just wanted to demonstrate how split by number of characters is different from split by position. Okay, there is a difference between the two. I hope you all noticed it. So in my case, okay, let me cancel this. In my case, or in our case, where we are interested in getting the name of the country, here Portugal, here the United Kingdom, here Egyptian and British joint rule, here Belgium, so on and so forth, right? So you can see there is something present here in common. All of them have the word from, independence from which country? Independence from the United Kingdom, independence from, the, from France, independence from Portugal, independence from British rule, right? So from is there. Now here we have an option to split the column by delimiter. This will help us. Okay, here extract will not help you. What will you extract, right? There is nothing fixed to uh, actually extract. Of course, we can use delimiter. But here I will do it with split column. Okay, by delimiter. By delimiter. Now when I say by delimiter, it's taking space as the delimiter automatically. However, again, we can click there and we can choose other delimiters. What other delimiters do we have? As you can see, we can use a colon mark if it is the delimiter, comma, equal to sign, semicolon, space, and tab. None of these are going to help us in our case. So here we have one very interesting option, which is custom. You can type in your own delimiter. So when I go with custom, I can type in my own de delimiter, which is from. And I've given a space also. Or let's say take from. Okay. And what do I need? Using from as the delimiter, what do I need? Write most. Write most. Okay. And now when I click on okay, you will notice how it came. It got split into two parts. Uh, and it has given me the names of the countries that I needed that were necessary for my analysis. So split column by delimiter worked. Just use a space also. Okay, now it is perfect. That extra space is also taken care of. Okay, here, I, I think there's a small problem. Let me not put any space. All right, from. So I wanted to know from which country, from which rule the particular country received independence. So under it was under the rule of Portugal. Um, Angola was under the rule of the Portugal. It got independence from Portugal in this year. Ind independence from the United Kingdom in so and so, so year. So whatever we desired to get is done. So I'll rename this column and call it independence from. Okay. So after splitting, it will perform the rename and then it has also assigned data types accordingly. All right. This step is not required. Okay. Next, rename the columns. Okay, if I had gone over here, I could have done it. Okay. So this is about the split function. Let me now look at your questions. If you have anything related to the split function or the extract function, just type in, I will see. Yeah, so, Sai Swaru. Yes, recordings are available on our YouTube channel. Yeah, Ashutosh, everything has been shared. What is the sequence of cleaning so that we don't forget any point? Nothing like that. But see, uh, there is no sequence. But when you sequence, meaning first of all, navigation, uh, source, connecting the source to the source choosing the required file, then immediately, what are the first things that you will observe about your data? You will see if there are any blank rows or blank columns. You will see if there are any records that are into errors, right? You will see whether the column names have been read properly or not. So the moment you look at your data, these are the first few steps that will come in your mind. And the, the most, um, I think, important thing and the powerful feature which Power BI has is, it is keeping a track of everything that we have done here. So at any point, you can revert your data. You can go and see what it looked like before that step. 
Okay, so that way you can easily keep a track of what you have done. And in case you have missed out something also, when you revisit these steps, if you feel something got missed out, you can go and apply that step. Okay, so that is the beauty of Power BI, which makes it a very powerful book. All right. So I hope you all understood extract and split. Now we'll proceed further. <clears throat> I split these columns, the, the independence column. I'm going to undo that step because I would like to take a duplicate of it. Okay, I want to duplicate it because I might need it later on. So before I split it, I will just create a duplicate column so that I have a copy of it. Now I'll go ahead and split it. My delimiter, custom delimiter. From and rightmost delimiter. Rightmost delimiter. Anyway, we have it only in one place. The word from is there in only one place, so no problem. And click on OK. So independence is here. From was the delimiter, and after the delimiter, we whatever name we have, it's there. Now, what if you might have to merge the data? Okay, I split the data into two parts, but what if I have to merge it? Uh, merge data from two different fields into one field. As long as you are focusing on one column or you select only one column, right? The, the option to merge the columns is disabled. But when we select both the columns, now I'm going to select independence first part and the second part. Now I would like to merge the two of them. Okay, or you can even select multiple things. So these two columns need to be merged. These two need to be merged. So I selected them. And now you can see under the text column group on this transform ribbon, merge columns option has become active. I just need to click on it. And what will it do? Concatenate the currently selected columns into one column. So once I click on merge columns, it will also allow us to choose what should be the separator between those two columns if we might want to give one. And also we can give a name to the column. I'll just leave it as merged. Here you can give a meaningful name. And how do you want to separate them? Means when I'm bringing these two together, do you want a separator or not? If we say none, if we say none, both of them are merged together and between them, there is no separator. So if you look at the data, independence one and independence two, uh, earlier what we had, is before the name of the country, there was a space which is coming as is. I didn't introduce the space over there. All right, let me go and edit that step. So let's say I want to use um, a comma as a separator between the two fragments that are being merged. Then it will look like this, comma. Okay, let's say idea, I would just want to say independence from Portugal, independence from the United Kingdom. In that case, what to do? We can even give our own custom separator, which could even be a word from. Independence, then from is going to be the delimiter. It is merged with that word from. Okay, so this is also possible. You can split and after having split, you can even go ahead and merge the columns. If required, not mandatory, but if required. So we spoke about split, we spoke about merge. I'll now show you something related to conditional columns that can be created, okay? Now over here, I have a field called as year. Let's say I want to create three groups of countries, three groups of countries, countries which received or which got their independence prior to 1950, the countries which got their independence from 1950 to let's say 1960 or 70, and countries which got their independence after 1970. Okay, so how do I mark each thing as like, okay, this country, basically I would like to create a new column indicating when the independence was obtained. Okay, based on the year field. And look at the data type of the year field. It is string data type, ABC. All right. Um, which is not correct actually which will not help us in writing our condition, but I just want to give you a demonstration that what I'm doing is wrong. So if I would like to add a column, we have add column option on the menu. So when we click on add column, again, we get 
the ribbon corresponding to it. And here there is something called as conditional column. So I'll click on conditional column. Here, we can give a new name to the column and we can choose the column name, year. Now year here is string data as you can notice. So if it is string data, look at the operators that we have. Equal to something that you mentioned here or not equal to what you mentioned here begins with a certain you know, character or substring. It does not begin with certain characters or substrings that you mentioned. Ends with, does not end with, contains, does not contain. These are not going to help me set up my condition. So I will just cancel. Now, I'm going to change the data type of this field to a whole number, to a whole number. Okay, now that it is numerical, you can see the alignment, just, to, just like in the case of Excel sheet, right? Text is um, left aligned, numerical data is right aligned, same thing. Anyway, both of them are Microsoft products, so their behavior is also similar. And when you click on this dropdown also, you will realize how it is similar to the Excel dropdown. In a text table in Excel, or you have a drop down, you have options to sort your data, to apply filters, to make selection. Same thing, same options we have here as well. All right, now I'll just go up and say, I would like to add a conditional column and give a name to the column. Let's say group by year of independence. Column name is year. This time the year column is numerical because I already took care of it. I changed its data type to whole number. So because we are dealing with numerical data, the operators will change. So it is now, look, look at that, equal to, not equal to, greater than, greater than, equal to, less than, less than, equal to. So let's say if it is less than or equal to 1950, then I will say, that we got the independence before 1950. Okay, less than 1950, I'll keep. And I'll say the those that particular country would have, uh, I'll mark it as before 1950. Okay, I have another clause to add. So I'll click on add clause, which leads to else if. If this is not true, if it is not less than 1950, then there is another condition that is to be uh, verified. That the system has to check, is the year less than, let's say 1970, okay? So if it is not less than 1950, check if it is less than 1970. So which conditions will be, uh, which countries will be marked to those countries whose independence was obtained from the year of 1950 until 1969, right? So let's say between 1950 and 1970 or 1969, from 1950 till let's say 1970. Okay, country, uh, countries who got their independence in this range, isn't it? From 1950 to 1990. So this is another group, group of countries that became independent in this time range. Now I don't have anything else to check. If it is not falling, if the if it is not below 1950, and if it is not in this range of 1950 to 1970, less than or equal to 1970, then I'll just simply call it after 1970. So I don't have another condition to test, to write a clause here. If these conditions are not met, then by default, what should be done? What should be done with those records, which do not meet any of the conditions that have been specified? I would like to mark it as after 1970. Okay, logical statement. Logical statement is what we have written and we are using comparison operators less than, less than, equal to on numerical values and based on what happens here, based on which condition is met, 
we are creating a new column which will hold this data right what what is the purpose we are trying to create a new column based on the condition satisfied the data will go into the column accordingly values will be filled into that column so once i click on okay you can see the new column is created here it is before 1950 this is after 1970 okay here we got independence in 1950 so 50 to 70 bucket here 1956, this is 99, which is after 1970. This is 1861, which is before 1950. So new column has the data. Now here, I would like to do some quick formatting. Before, after is fine, but from and to, I want to capitalize the first letter of from and to also. So we have format option, look at that. Do you want everything in lowercase? So everything becomes lowercase. Do you want everything in uppercase? And everything becomes uppercase. Do you want to capitalize each word? Yes, I would like to capitalize. So you see from and to also have become capital. Do you want to simply trim? Trim means if there are any spaces before and after, they will be removed. Okay, would you like to um, add some sort of a prefix or some sort of a suffix to the data? You could do that also. All right, I'm not doing it, I'll cancel it. And all of these steps I will remove. Lowercase not required, uppercase not required. And the one that is capitalized is what I need. Okay, I need capitalized from and to. After this step, it will get capitalized, okay? So this is what um, we have done. So we understood that we can split, we can merge, we can use formatting and we also have an option to add new columns by writing conditional statement. This is conditional column. We can also create columns from examples. And every step that you perform, you can see the M language code that is being written for every step we do. Of course, it's not necessary to know how to write uh, the code in M language, but it would be very interesting to just see and explore and understand how it is being written. Okay, so we used, uh, add, we added a column based on condition. So what we tried to do is we tried to add a column to this table and the column was a conditional column and to the column that we added there, we capitalized each word, right? So it's writing it it's in its own language. It's writing a, a, a thing for us here, okay? Now the next thing is adding a column from an example. This is very interesting. Actually, most of the things that we have done, split, merge, all these things, you can do it directly by adding a column from example. Okay, uh, let's, let's see if I can get the year part in the date field using add column by example. Okay, so I'll select date field. I'll select the date field and go to add column. And then click on from selection. Otherwise, you can use all columns here from the selected column. So from selection, what is to be selected? You can see a checkbox comes against every field that you might want to include when you're trying to create a new column. This is already selected because I had earlier selected it. Now here, when you say you're adding a column from example, you just go double click and type in, or you just select 1925, 1925, and I'll hit the enter key. So it's not able to understand that we are trying to get the year part. It is just assuming that we are trying to replicate whatever data is here, 1925 was there as easy it came here. It just thought that I'm replicating the data, but no, it couldn't understand. So I need to help it a little more. I'll double click here. And here I will type in 1999, enter. Now it understood the pattern. Okay, so until it is able to understand the pattern, you try. Now using that, I managed. So most of the places you can see very nicely the year has come. But here where I have only three, three um, digits, it did not. So in such cases, some one-off cases, which are not automatically handled when you're trying to add a column, by from an example, 
If there are cases where it's not able to automatically detect, you can just go double click and manually enter it. This is a very interesting feature. Whatever uh, Power BI has automatically detected is wonderful. Okay, it filled everything automatically detecting what we were trying to do. Wherever it could not detect, you manually enter it. One or two things. No harm in that, right? Job done. Now I'll click on OK. Finish. So we got our year. Where is it? The last characters from the year field were inserted here, right? So it's saying inserted last characters. That was the step which I performed. So from the date, the last characters were taken. Let's see what is the end code for this. Okay, by clicking on this gear icon, you can see what it did. It basically took last four, which is equivalent to what? How many ending characters to keep? It came by example. I took four characters from here. So from everywhere, four characters were obtained. The place where four characters were not there, I had to manually type in 90. But how did Power BI read that step? It is equivalent to extracting the last four characters. Right? What I did earlier by going to transform, by going to extract and say I want the last four characters, same thing it has done. But rather than doing this like this, I did it by example. Okay. So adding a column by example. Now here I will give you one more um, uh, example here. So let's say we have the year part. Okay, we have the year column and independence obtained from so-and-so. So I would like to have a new column. I want to create a new column, which has to say something like this. This country got independence from Portugal in this year. I want a new column, which is going to read like this, Angola. Then from this column, got independence from Portugal. And then this column in the year 1925. Okay, I'll try it with example. So let me go ahead, add column from example, from certain columns that I'm going to select from selection. This is little tricky, okay, please see. So now I have to select the columns that should be involved in creating that new column. I would like to take data from the country column. I would like to take the data from this merged column, okay? And I would like to take the data from the year column. So as of now, let's say I'm not putting year. As of now, I'm taking only data from the country column and from the merged column. And here, this side, you see, as I scroll, you can see this is fixed. Okay, this is fixed. As I scroll, this part is moving. Column one is fixed. Okay. Now I'll just double click in column one. So Angola is the country and this is from the merged field. So Angola, I can either type in or I could select it from here. Space, I'll say got. This is something I'm writing from my side. Then this got. independence from Portugal. All right. It got independence from Portugal. Enter. Now you can see how beautifully it has detected everything. Okay. See, for, for, for uh, Albania, what is it saying? Albania got independence from the United Kingdom. I typed only this. But this is like equivalent to the flash fill option that we have in Excel. Now we have this exam, column by example, similar kind of feature. By example, feature has been introduced into Excel also. Now, so you see, now here, whatever was the country, Armenia got independence from Belgium. I mean, these are not correct, okay? I had edited the data so much, this, this is not true information. It is not true, it's just random information. Uh, don't think that really Armenia got independence from Belgium. This is all just false information. Australia didn't get, independence from France. It's just incorrect. It's false. Okay. This is not true. Only for um, practice sake, I'm showing you. So this is done. Now, what if I would like to see the M code, which Power BI has written in order to generate this? 
Okay, I'll just click on okay. Actually, we can see it here, but I'll click on okay. And you can see the code here. We can also go to this geared icon and we click on it and we can see the end code written. Text has been combined from where? From the country field. Then I had hard coded the word God and from the merged field, everything was taken. Now I need to put year also. This country got independence from whatever, from the merged field I have taken. But I need something else also to be written here. So I'll just say, comma, I'm putting the end code. In. Okay. Country got independence, merged field, in. And then comma. And then I will just insert the year field. Okay. This is basically M code. I don't know if it will work. Let's check. It went into an error. Okay. Better not try such a thing. Earlier I had done, it worked. I had done in a slightly different way. Okay. Okay. Cancel. I'll do it again. Column from selection, country, got independence from so-and-so in the merge field. And I would like to include here also. And I'll just double click here. So Angola, you see how it auto-populated? Got. Again, I will double click. I need to edit in 1925. So you can see how it managed to populate it. Look at that. For this year 1925, for this year 1999. Okay, here you can see, here you can see 2002, here you can see 2011. All right. So this is how the code is generated. Let me show you the gear icon like this. Okay. So this is how, by example, very easily we can do whatever we have to do. We can split things, we can merge things. You give an example, Power BI will recognize the pattern and it will fill the data in the remaining places. Automatically fill the data in the remaining, uh, the entire column for that matter, in the entire column. So that is columns from examples. Now, you, if you know M language, or if you are to some extent proficient in writing that language, which is not necessary, but in case anybody knows M language or is interested in learning it, then we have another option to create custom columns. Add column, custom column. This is where it will allow you to give a name to your column. And here it allows you to write in the code. So you can just write the code if you know it. So at first I've taken the country field and I'm putting the text in there, became independent in the year field and it got whatever from the independence field. From three different fields, I'm taking data in this envelope. So my new column will have that information. Okay, earlier it worked, now it's not. Maybe some mistake I might have made. So in case somebody would like to do the coding themselves, they can click on custom column and they can enter the code over here. There is another option, invoke custom function. For this, we need to write some queries first. After you have written the queries, you can do it. But this is way too advanced. We will leave it for now. So that is how we add columns. Now, apart from all this, there is also an option called as index column that we can add. Index column. Suppose here, if you look at this data, we don't have any row number as such. We don't have any column holding the row number. Let's say row one, row two, row three. This is just default, but within the table. Inside the table, I don't have row number. So I could go and create an index column, starting from either zero or from one or from some customized number. Let's say these are names of employees and the employee ID has to be automatically given. And it, was, it, it should start from, let's say, 5001 or some different number. So you can also add an index column starting at a different number. I'll say from one. So I have a new column index, which is going to start at one. And I can use this as row numbers, row one, row two, row three, row four. 
okay you can automatically generate and add a column that will act like row number index so that is another feature that we have under add column so yeah quite a lot of things we have covered under add column and under transform now we will proceed to the next group over here uh, on the home ribbon the next group which is merge queries and then we will talk about append queries we had already discussed combined files okay merge queries again remember query is nothing but a table so merge queries is nothing but when you have to join the data coming from multiple tables merge is equivalent to join so anybody who has been through tableau course you would know what joins are how we join the data there in tableau we join it using this merge queries option and append queries is equivalent to the union option uh, and and if any of you has gone through our sql training then you would know these things that there are seven types seven to eight types of joins that are available when to perform a join what is a join when to perform a union and what is a union when to perform what and how to perform whether it is in sql or in tableau all that is already there on our channel so if you have time today just go through watch otherwise tomorrow we will discuss it in detail about merge queries and append queries now i would like to um, i thought i'll do merge queries but i think before we get there we will discuss one more feature that we have which is pivot pivot column and then unpivot column so these two options are also very interesting options one needs to know so let's talk about pivot and unpivot now for which i will make connection to a different data source so i'll go here to new data source and connect to another excel once this concept is over i will look at your questions and i will answer them okay um you have to like okay let me just take data only from one sheet tomorrow i will show you how to join all this data today i'll just take data from one sheet over here so look at the way the data is stored here of course we will promote the rows as headers now look at the way the data is stored um i have data for different countries and let's say this is some profit data or sales figures or some statistics related to that country and in from each year so in 2011 what were the numbers like 2012 13 then 14 and 15 so each year is a separate column over here right each year is a separate column now rather than having it like this each year as a separate column let's say i would like to have a column called as year okay which has to store these years so 2011 should become a row should be like this 2011 and the data corresponding to it another column holding the data corresponding to it okay so this is called pivot and unpivot let me explain the concept first so what i am saying is these will remain the way they are country and country code will remain the way it is now rather than having each year as a separate column i want a column with the name year called year and i want one column which will hold the values here the year should come 2011 2012 2013 2014 and 2015 and here the values should come let's say for india it's 200 then it is 250 then it is 275 then we have 280 and then we have 300 okay now this leads to significant multiplication or increase in the number of rows 
So here each column will become a row, right? I, I'm transposing five columns into rows. So data stored across five columns should become rows, which means each row becomes five rows. Each row becomes five rows. Why? Because five columns are getting converted into rows. Okay, each column is becoming a row. These are five columns. So we get five rows per record, per record. Now for Bahrain again, I'm going to get five rows with the values. So we're not losing any data. That is the beauty of it. If you notice, we're not losing any information or data over here. Everything is intact. Only thing the way it is getting stored is different. So if you might want to do this. Now, similarly, again, US, if you take, that will become another five rows, okay? Again, 2011 to 15, the columns that we have will become rows over here and the data corresponding to it, 300. The next value is 320. Okay, the next value is 350. The next value is 400 and the next value is 450. So each column see here, Right, I hope you all got the idea. Like this, your data will get transformed like this. Like this. Okay, now how do we achieve this in Power BI? Let me close it. How do we achieve this in Power BI? How do we pivot and unpivot the data? Now we have one, one option is select all the columns that have to participate. So select the first column, hold down the shift key on the keyboard, go all the way up to the last column and select it. After that, go up to the transform ribbon and unpivot columns. Now here, unpivot the columns that have been selected or unpivot all the other columns. So only the selected columns, unpivot columns, I will say. Look at that. So they, it will lead to the creation of two new columns. One is attribute, which is which you can again rename to something more uh, relevant, like here in this case, the other is value. Okay, how it got pivoted and how for e unpivoted and how data is now being stored. Bahrain five records, US five records, UK five records, and Australia five records. The other way of doing it, okay, I'm going to just, now you, you look at this. First, I had unpivoted the data, which gave me these two, then I renamed it, right? Then I renamed it. The attribute thing, I renamed it to here. Now, suppose I go and delete this step, this step. So this, if I de delete, it is going to break the sequence and the subsequent steps may not work well. You see, this went into an error. What is the error now? I renamed, what was the step? It, it changed the name of the column from attribute to year. Now the column attribute itself is not found because I deleted it. I deleted that step which led to the creation of the column attribute. The column itself does not exist, so it cannot rename anything. Therefore, this went into an error. So when you're deleting any steps, if there are any steps after that step which has been deleted, they may go into an error depending on if you're breaking the sequence in the query. Okay, here I will undo this step by simply deleting it. So the suppose here I have only five columns, so it was easy. I, I selected the first one, holding down the shift key, go to the last column, Okay, and just select everything. Or easy method is, now let's say just these two should not participate. Except for these two, everything else should be unpivoted. So I'll select the two which should not be involved. Go up here and select this option, unpivot other columns. Okay, pretty straightforward, right? What you have selected or everything other than what you have selected. In this case, other than what I have selected, it will lead to the same output. Now that I have the attribute column, if I want, I can go ahead and change it to here. Okay, rename the column. So this is done. Now, what if you might want to take the structure? Let's say you have been given data, which is in this format, but now you need to um, store it as columns. Each year has to be stored as a column. You need to pivot it now. Okay, when what you have to change it back, swap it. So. You can just select the columns and if you select three columns, you see pivot is not possible. P 
Pivot is not possible if you select more than two columns. Select two columns. Pivot is possible, but the moment you select the third column, logically it is not meaningful. It is not possible. Okay, so I select these two and I will say pivot. Why? Because what is going to happen? Data in one column will become the column header, isn't it? Data in this column will become the column header. So 2011 will become one column. 2012 becomes another column. 2013 will be another column. 14 will be another column. 15 will be another column. One field, data in one field will be used to create new columns. And data in the other field will be stored as values, as information in that column. That's it. Data from one field will become columns. Data from another field will become the values. So the moment you make a third selection, logically it is impossible. That is why you can't do it. Okay, two columns, then here it's asking. It has automatically understood that whatever is in the year column is going to become new columns. And what about values? Obviously, whatever is there in the value column, this column, which is also automatically detected. We can just confirm here by clicking on OK. Now you see how data in that year column, which was list of years have become columns and the values are there now. Without any trouble, we have our values back. So it is possible to pivot and it is also possible to unpivot. For unpivot, you can either select the columns that should not be pivoted and then unpivot all the other columns or you can select the columns that are supposed to be pivoted and then pivot them. Now, when you want to pivot, you have to select only two things because one will become the column header, the other will become the value. If you select third column, logically it is not correct, it is not possible. So that is the concept of pivot and unpivot, which we have covered today, apart from add columns. Now that we have understood pivot and unpivot, tomorrow we will do merge queries. Okay, so I just changed the agenda here. We discussed not merge queries, pivot and unpivot was discussed. Okay, this is what we discussed today, day three. Tomorrow when we meet, we will talk about merge queries, append queries, and uh, proceed further from there. All right. So I hope today's session was informative. Please let me know. Uh, you can. Yeah, I'm, I'm looking at um, the chat on YouTube now. If you have any questions, please raise it there. I will answer. And uh, as always, please do not leave without hitting the like button. It really inspires.